Hello everyone, in this session we will discuss cash and cash equivalent, which companies often report together on their financial statements, as you can see on your screen. Cash is simple to understand, we are all familiar with cash. Nevertheless, we will define it from an accounting point of view. We will also explain what is cash equivalent and what or what cash equivalents are which can be a bit more complex than just cash because we are all familiar with the word cash. To explain this, I will start by using an analogy. To show you the difference or to explain the difference using an analogy between cash and cash equivalent, imagine you are packing for a trip and you need to bring items that are easy to access and use at any time. In this case, we all assume and we can all agree that cash is the best asset for that trip actual money in your pocket it's immediately available to you when you need it cash equivalents on the other hand are like having a prepaid travel card or vouchers that are just as useful as cash but may need a quick exchange prepaid travel cards and similar items they are incredibly easy to convert and ready to be used in a split of a second, but you need to exchange them to convert them into cash. Now together, cash and cash equivalents ensure you are, fi you are financially prepared for any situation that comes up, just like having the right travel essentials that keeps your trip smooth. Let's go ahead and start this trip in explaining what is cash and cash equivalents from an accounting perspective. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Cash includes currency, coins, deposit, and the bank accounts. It also include deposits such as customer checks. When you deposit customer checks, well, that's deposited in your bank account, that's listed under cash. Cashier's check, if someone sends you a cashier's check, that's a cash account. Certified checks, of course, that's the best type of checks. It's certified. The money is guaranteed. It's there. And money orders, if people still use those. These days, people are not using checks anymore, let alone money orders. But those are considered all cash. Cash is physical cash, coins, currency. We should be familiar with that. What is liquidity? Liquidity is a measure of the company's ability to pay its current liabilities using its liquid asset. So what is liquidity? Well, <laughs> it measures if when we say a company is liquid or not, it means what? It means how fast, how easy they can generate liquid asset. Okay, what is liquid asset? Liquid asset are asset that can be easily generated into cash cash is the most liquid asset why because you can take cash and pay off your current liabilities so liquidity is a measurement of how fast or what's the company ability to pay off its debt whether it's current or non-current because you need liquid asset now what are liquid assets liquid assets are those can be quickly converted into cash without any significant loss of value well let's think about it cash is 100% liquid. Liquid means cash is cash. You can take it today and pay off your debt. So if you have a lot of cash, we can say you have a lot of liquidity. Your company is liquid. Your balance sheet is liquid. Now, matter of fact, the way we list the assets on the balance sheet, we list them in order of liquidity. The order of asset on the balance sheet typically reflect their liquidity. With the most liquid are listed first and that's why when we look at the balance sheet what's listed first you guessed it cash now under the IFRS the international financial reporting standard it's the opposite they list the most liquid at the bottom we believe in the US the most liquid should be on the top because it's important and we want to show you the top 
first. That's why in the US we do that. Now, why are we talking and defining liquidity? Because we need to talk about cash equivalent. What are cash equivalent? We know what cash is. That's easy. When we look at the balance sheet, we saw that the company would have cash and cash equivalent. Well, cash equivalent must be something different than cash. Indeed, those are short term, highly liquid investment. What is highly liquid? Now we know what liquid is. It means it can be easily, easily converted into cash. Well, what are their criteria? One, one thing is easily converted into a known amount of cash. You could easily and quickly. It's not only easily, ease and quick, fast, without losing the value. And, and notice the word and, it has two condition. They're close to their maturity, and that means within three months. In other words, this piece of paper, that's not cash, that's not cash, it has two criteria. One, it can be easily converted into cash quickly, easily converted to a known amount, and it's close to its maturity. Two criteria to cash equivalents. Now, what are some examples of cash equivalent? Well, I'm going to start with U.S. United States Treasury bills. So what is this United States Treasury bill? The U.S. government borrows money. That's how they operate. The government don't have money. So what do they do? They borrow. So they borrow money. Who do they borrow money? From people. So you have the U.S. government they give you this US, it's called T-bill, US Treasury bill. They give you this paper and you'd give them in return your money. Now you have this piece of paper. It's sh showing that you lend the US government money. Let's assume $10,000, but let's make it $9,800. You lend them $9,800 and to keep it simple, in three months, they will pay you back 10000 What does that mean? It means you gave them 9800 They gave you this piece of paper that's saying the U.S. government promised to pay you back $10,000. It's a form of borrowing. It's an agreement between you and the U.S. government. This is called Treasury Bill because it's for a short period of time. If you have this piece of paper, you can go anywhere to a bank. There's a market for it. And you can sell it immediately to a known amount of cash. Now, if you lend them the money today, 9800 no one's going to give you the 10000 But if you wait a month, you will get maybe 9800 and maybe $40. Okay? Because the person that's buying it, the person that's buying this paper, they are going to get 10000 guaranteed within three months. But they will pay you a little bit more, so it's easily converted to cash. There's a market for it to a known amount, and there's a computation. They will do that, and they will pay you some interest, and they want to make some profit as well. So that's why U.S. Treasury bill would be considered cash equivalent. It's not cash, but it's so close to cash. Another piece of paper called commercial paper. You remember I said the U.S. government borrow money to finance itself? Commercial paper are debt instruments but who issue commercial paper u.s corporation and not any u.s corporation u.s corporation with excellent credit it means they have a good reputation in terms of borrowing money and paying off their debt they have an excellent credit therefore commercial paper same concept you lend money to a u.s corporation and that u.s corporation has a good credit it's good to go Another example of, of cash equivalent is money market funds. When you deposit your money at an investment firm, what they do, they deposit this money in an account called money market funds. It sounds like a mutual fund, like an investment, but it's a money market. So in this money market, you can convert your money easily back to cash. So money market funds are considered cash equivalent. Those are examples of cash equivalents. So that's why on the balance sheet, you would see cash and cash equivalent. So we talked about cash. And now you know what cash equivalent, some typical examples of cash equivalent. Remember their criteria, easily and quickly converted to cash. They're close to maturity. And specifically, close mean, close mean it's within three months, they mature. It means you go back to the issuer of that paper and they'll give you back your money. Reporting cash and cash equivalent. Again, they are reported on the balance sheet as a single item under current asset. There was a lot of discussion about separate them, separate cash and cash equivalent. 
it's as of today it's still cash and cash equivalent reported together now in the notes of the financial statements in the notes the company will explain what do they consider cash equivalent and usually they break it down so this combined total represent the liquid asset the amount of liquid asset available to use in operation why is this number important because it tells you about the liquidity of the company liquidity is again how fast they can pay off their debt because what happened if you can't pay off your debt you go out of business and that's important to talk about business man cash management real briefly one of the main reasons why companies fail is poor cash management when do you go out of business you go out of business when you run out of cash therefore effective cash management make sure that the company could meet its cash payment when they are due and maintain a necessary amount of cash to operate simply put you want to make sure you have enough coming incoming cash cash receipts that's at least equivalent to your cash payments obviously you want to have some extra cash but the minimum is meet your requirement I have payments I have to plan for that so you have to maintain a minimum cash levels why to only operate also cash don't earn interest cash gives you you would learn this in your finance course and my finance course I also have finance course on Farhat lectures cash earns the lowest return cash is usually you know it's non -er non earning because you're not taking any risk with cash so no one's gonna pay you a return if you deposit your money at the bank your money in quote is guaranteed well that's a guaranteed investment no one's gonna compensate you for taking that risk because there's no risk you get compensated for taking risk it means you invest your money in bonds and stocks you take risk you generate return but having too much cash also not not good because you're tying up your cash for no reason now you also need to keep you know a certain amount of cash basically for what purpose for emergencies now effective cash management strategies could include could include many things but let's look at few strategies one is encourage collection of receivable you want your money as soon as possible try to entice the collection of receivable to receive your money earlier how do you do we talked about this you offer discounts so if you want your customer you you want to incentivize them to pay you early offer them discount to pay you early that's one thing on the other hand delay payment of liabilities when you have a payment delay the payment of liability to keep more cash on hand more time to use your cash now bear in mind if you if, if you can take advantage of a discount and it's worth it you pay within the discount period well often what what companies do they pay on the last permissible day to maximize the use of their funds or on the last day that they can get the discount so if on day 10 you get the discount I remember we used to mail the check on day 10 keep only the necessary asset don't keep excess cash avoid, avoid acquiring expensive assets that are rarely used why because they can tie up your cash so if you don't need a lot of supplies don't buy supplies and keep them in the closet on the, don't buy excess inventory leasing or renting can be a better alternative to avoid large initial cash payments so if you have a cash amount well you may not want to buy this asset up front if you're not sure if you need this asset for a long period of time so maybe renting or leasing could be part of your cash strategy why because you don't have to put an initial payment up front I'm not saying that's always the case for my personal philosophy I don't believe in renting or leasing I believe in buying but from a business perspective sometime you want to rent or lease the asset maybe for six months or a year to make sure there's a demand for your product then you make the initial investment plan expenditure align expenditure with seasonal and business cycles to ensure that money is available sometimes what's gonna happen you're gonna have a lot of money and sometimes not too much you want to make sure you plan your expenditure appropriately because poor planning could get you in a cash shortage cash shortage situation when you have a lot of expenditure and don't have the cash and what should you do if you have extra cash invest cash immediately now where do you want to invest the cash uh, well you could put it in cash equivalent or some short-term investments you have to be careful short-term investments like Treasury bill money market can provide interest and what and keeping that money available to you that's important because 
this strategy this strategy is when I need the cash I can have it if you tie it in stocks and equity and the stock price goes down and you need your cash well you can get your cash but it loses value so it meet one so think about stocks if you have stocks well stocks would meet one of those cash equivalent criteria what's that easily converted to cash easily converted but the amount is not known because when you have stocks guess what it could go down 10 15 20 30 percent and you would lose the value let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com which of the following best describe a cash equivalent so what is a cash equivalent is it a 10-year corporate bond inventory a three-year US a three-month US Treasury bill or an account receivable what is cash equivalent cash equivalent is something that can be easily converted to cash easily converted and and within three month maturity can a corporate bond be easily converted yes it can but it has this is a 10-year bond it's not it's not close to maturity it means you have to wait 10 years to get your money this is a long term bond out inventory can you convert inventory um, if you want to yes you can if you have inventory you can drop your price to the floor if something is a for a hundred dollar and you advertise it for 20 you can quickly sell this inventory and get your cash but what's gonna happen is the amount is not known and the amount is way lower than you than you need it so inventory is not cash equivalent because it cannot be easily inverted to a cash amount without losing a lot of value so it's out three month treasury bill yes can you easily convert yes is it to a known amount yes because the interest rate on treasury bill it's well known and it doesn't fluctuate you're not going to lose a lot within a day or two account receivable can you convert to cash quickly yes but you're going to lose a lot so D is out and sometimes you cannot find someone to buy your receivable and we'll talk about that later on it's called factoring so the answer is US Treasury bill remember money market is also money market fund and commercial paper are considered cash equivalent so in this session we learn about cash and cash equivalent and a little bit about cash management what should you do you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional MCQs that's going to help you whether you are an accounting student a CPA candidate CMA candidate invest in yourself this topic is also covered in my finance course. So if you're a finance student or taking a finance course, check it out at farhatlectures.com. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.